with experience into day modeling. I'm good with SQL, DAX, OBA, uh, and uh, SSA tether models. So I've been working with uh, Gemini Solutions prior to that I worked with BIS. So working with two companies, I worked with Boston Tech Corporation, AM Plus Financial Services, and these. So working with these three projects, I got very good exposure of sales, finance, procurement, manufacturing, HRMS, fixed and separate insights. So this is more the technical function. So I am used for uh, multiple projects. I have good exposure with the data warehousing. I have exposure of ETL. I do have some exposure and informative I do. So this is more of it. Okay. And I worked in Agile. Okay. okay. So what do you do you on your day-to-day -day activity? So like you know, we will be dealing with the uh, Scrum codes. So internal scrum calls and time scrum calls. So on every three hours basis, like we used to wind up our uh, uh, updates. So on a regular basis, like we will be dealing with Jira ticketing tool. There will be Jira stores assigned to me for each uh, sprint. So we'll be having like two week sprints. So for each sprint, like I'll be assigned with the 10 to 12 points. So each story has like three to two to three to three, three points. So mostly I deal with RBA reporting, uh, report enhancements, changes of the report, building the report from scratch. Okay. So, what steps do you follow to optimize the Power BI dashboard? So, in general, like you know, like I'll make sure it's not a junk model. We need to create a star schema or a complex schema kind of thing. A fact with multiple dimensions or two facts with multiple dimensions is first thing I'll check for the model. I'll check with the user any data which we can refine or which we can filter in the source system itself. And I'll avoid many relationships and try to create more, more some measures avoid uh, calculated problems. And then I'll deal with uh, you know the main things on the and I'll go with plain measures. And uh, if I'm seeing any issues with that, I'll try to check with the analyzer, performance analyzer, Max Studio. I can use all the data mark. I can use all the data projects to analyze and understand the data set. Whether there is an issue with cardinality, there is an issue with volume data, issue with measures, like everything I can analyze. Okay. Can you tell me different components under Power BI? Different? Different components of Power BI. So, like, you know, where we can perform relationships and everything. Power query, like, where we can perform all the advanced changes when we can deal with the reports. And uh, visualization of reports, like, where we can view the measures. Okay. Can you tell me the limitations of the Power Query? Limitations of? Power Query. Uh, then we can't perform any dimension functions. We can't do uh, most of the tax state. It's limited to M. It's limited to merge queries, append queries, condition calls, uh, you know, case index. The, you know, very minimal things we can do in the operator. All right. All right. So, what are the different refresh options available in Power BI? On demand refresh, we need to refresh. And man manual refresh in the local system. Like, you know, uh, on the desk, we can refresh the report and we can publish it to servers. The server, we can do on demand refresh. Whenever you want, we can schedule refresh. We can schedule the report like a code, we can do uh, items per day. And for our premium, we can schedule the items per day. Okay. So, what do you do if the refresh get fails? Like, let's say you are doing the uh, tile refresh and it get failed. Then, what are the steps that you will follow? Uh, I see the refresh statistics, refresh history, like uh, if there is any error being uh, sorted out there. Mm -hmm. If that is not clear, I'll try to download the PDX file, go through the you know, manual refresh. So I see like which, which report, which table is causing the issue. So I'll go to that uh, individual object and I'll see like what is causing the issue. Okay. Okay. So can you tell me the basic difference of the direct query and the live connection? Sure. So, direct doesn't require any kind of refresh, directly triggers the database, and it, it doesn't support any kind of creation of transmissions or creation of tools on the Power BI Whereas, live, you know, live is connecting to semantic layers, can be another the services or SSAs or anything. You know, where all the semantic layers sit on the on top of uh, in a cloud, uh, it can be Azure. 
So, we can connect from that way. So, the refresh is, uh, you know, near in the power page space, uh, but, you know, it's, it takes a little less time. And all the data from source system will be happened with power, power apps or, no, not power apps, there will be logic apps or even the HP agents also we can do that. So, yes, these are the major efforts that we are connecting with live and uh, can you tell me import data schedule? Like how to import the data import. in Power BI? We can go to get data and we can select the uh, connector uh, of source system. It can be Oracle, SQL Server, Data, Excel, SharePoint, whatever it might be. We'll select the data connector, import the credentials, we'll authenticate, we'll authenticate the credentials, we'll import the tables, then we'll be performing joints and we'll, on top of that, we'll create columns, measures, and reports. Okay. <clears throat> So, can you tell me the difference of the DAX function and the variable? So, like in the DAX function, we can create variables. Within the DAX functions itself, we can create variables. Variable is a place like where we are storing the values, and with the return value, we can implicitly showcase that whatever what variable has. Let's say I'm with three variables. Variable A equal to sum of sales, variable B equal to sum of completion, variable C equal to uh, sum of uh, uh, you know, uh, incentives. And I'm returning like A plus B plus C, so which is a summation of all the three. So variable stores aggregation values, it will be done with returning the value. Okay. So it's a part of that again. All right. So do you have a tablet, or sorry, the Power BI dashboard in your local machine to show something? No, like uh, it's restricted systems that we're working with Gemini solutions. We have uh, their own laptop, so nothing needs to be created on my local. Okay. Have you done any capstone project on your own? So that can be shared. Sorry? Have you done any self project? Uh, no, no, because uh, working with uh, in a self project, the sources will be very less. Uh, no, only I work with AI. Okay, okay, with. okay, not a problem. All right. Have you worked on a Snowflake database? Like, yes, to some extent. So, can you tell me the difference of fact table and the dimension table? Yeah, fact table is a place that like where all the foreign keys and measures are stored, or numericals are stored. Dimension table is a place that like where attributes or distinct values are stored. So, all the circuit keys will be stored. So all the dimensions hold unique values with the surrogate key. All the facts hold foreign keys, duplicate values of surrogate keys along with the measures. Uh, are you aware about the time traveling function in uh, Snowflake? Time? Time traveling in the Snowflake. No, no, no. no I work very limited at the Snowflake. So there was some Oracle query which, uh, which migrated from Oracle to Snowflake, so I reframed everything in the Snowflake and uh, I got the data from Snowflake. Okay. So the data was wise, I've come to a good, but I didn't uh, explode much into the and uh, inbuilt functions or pre-built functions of Snowflake. Okay, all right. So I'll give you a scenario. Let's say you have a Power BI dashboard. Okay. okay? And the Power BI dashboard okay. is now connected to single data source. Okay. Now okay. there is a new requirement, but in that new requirement, you have two different sources, okay? And you have to design the same Power BI dashboard. Although in old dashboard, whatever fields, whatever tables you had, it is the same, but uh, tables are now splitted into two different sources, okay? So, so when you say two different sources, we need to perform union on top of them. So how you will implement that? Like now, you have two different sources. My question is, mm -hmm. yeah, my question is, mm -hmm. uh, like you know, initially we had one one database mm -hmm. coming from SQL Server. Now two sources, two different tables. You are saying, right? Yeah. Right. So we need to perform union on top of those two tables. Uh, let's say you had performed the join in the tables when they, they were on the single data source. Okay. Mm -hmm. In back -end, so let me know. Yeah. So in back I'll import those two tables. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll perform join. I'll take the advanced query editor uh, complete code and I'll paste it in the first first part of the dashboard where what taking was there. So I'm trying to recreate everything. I mean, uh, in the first case, that what we have the same number of columns, column should be same, data should be same in order to not to disturb the dashboard. 
not to disturb the reports. So in the second phase, I'll import the both, both tables, I'll perform join, and I'll take the translator code and I'll paste it in the script data. Right? Okay. Where Monday will be imported. Okay. I can do the previous existing script and then take the batch. Okay, okay, fair enough. So on data to basis, can you tell me what volume of the data you handle? Like? So on regular basis, there was increase of uh, you know four hundred to five hundred records. That all because mostly at the transaction. Ah, uh, sorry, your voice is not audible. Can you repeat the answer? Sure, sure. What I am going to say is on regular basis, uh, as as a part of incremental data, you should see. 1400 to 1500 records, not more than that. What was the, what was the size of the data? Size of the data was you know uh, 1 million. Okay, okay. So, when the any requirement comes and you are dealing with the 1 TB of data, so how do you build a uh, hmm. dashboard on the top of the data? Like, what are the steps that you will follow? So, like you know, I'm trying to analyze that what user wants to see from the dashboard. Mm -hmm. I want to tell a story from the dashboard. Right? Mm -hmm. and I'll understand like what are the base, basic measures and what are the interesting measures of the user. Mm -hmm. You know, based on that, I'll find out the source columns and source tables, uh -huh. and I'll try to you know prepare a start schema, source text schema in the database itself. And then I'll put the tables into Power BI. I'll perform relationships on top of that. I'll create measures. Then I'll create summary page with KPIs and uh, for all the basic chats. And I'll, I'll have the best options for till down, till through, detailing report, hierarchies, you know, usage of timing and functions, best slices, all the attributes, and all the measures and everything. I'll try to do it from there. Okay, okay, all right. And uh, what are the filters available in Power BI? Filters and visual, filters and page, filters and all videos, build on filters, and filter within the calculated function. Okay. All right. Uh, have you worked on the SQL part? Yes, to some extent. I was not 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 uh, completely exposed to Excel, uh, Excel and SQL. I was most with Power BI and Informatica. Okay. I can do in, uh, all the all the activities in Power BI, but whereas in SQL, I can frame a query. I can do basic testing. I can, I can perform DDI and DML, but not nothing into real SQL. Okay. Okay. Can you tell me? What are the different constraints available in SQL? No, like I need to work on the constraints part. Okay. What are the joins? Joins like you know, left order join, right order join, inner join, cross join, full order join. Okay. Uh, I will give you a table in the chat box. Just let me know okay. if you are able to see it. Just a second. Can you see the table? One minute. Yes. Can you share your screen and the write the query for all the possible joint like left joint, right joint, full outer joint, and self joint along with the output? Sure, sure, sure. Okay. I mean, you can share your screen and type it. That's fine. Sure. You can open a notepad and type the query. Sure. Are you able to see? Not yet. Right. Are you able to see? No, still can't see your screen. Share the screen. You should be able to see. Let me reshare. Okay. Now? Yes, now I can see. 
Okay. So now we have this. So now we have these two tables, table A and table B, and uh, values are one, two, three, four, one, two, six, one, two, three, three, four, four, five, right? Mm -hmm. So what are the column names? The table name, uh, table name, table You table can you can name it as anything, a serial number or SR number, anything you can name it. I'll take it as ID then. Okay. okay. Select the star from I'll take alias names as so this is for inner track. So for inner join, what are the number of records? So for one, there is one record. For two, there is one record. Three, we have two records. So one, two, three, four records. Five, six records, six, seven records, eight records, and for inner join, we will see eight records. Can you type the output? Sorry, so can you type the output? output? Yes, one repeated for twice, two repeated for twice, three twice, four. And there is no matching five, and there is no matching six. So eight records. Okay. And for left join, as you see, like one repeated for twice, two repeated for twice, three repeated for twice, third twice, four repeated for twice, then one, two, three, four, six. So this is the ninth record. Okay. And for right order time, one distributed for twice, two distributed for twice, three distributed for twice, four distributed for twice. Next, five is something like it is there in the table and not there in this table. It's all random. And in the full order time, we'll see. Five and six. That's it. Is this the right action? Yeah, yeah. Correct, correct. That's fair enough. I'll give you another question. Let's say uh, okay. same table like you have table A and B. And now you mm -hmm. have to write a query to find the record is present in A table but not present in B table. Uh, we can perform a minus b. Minus. Yeah. Can you do it? Shall I write the query for it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which are there in A, not in B, this. And if you want vice versa, like we know, we can minus B from here. Which are there in B, not in A. Okay. This is B, this will be A. Alright. 
have you worked on a window function no okay so if i say you have to only retrieve the odd records like record having the odd serial number will you be able to write a query odd mm -hmm. i'm not getting it sorry you have to only retrieve the odd number of records like who are multiple of two okay so on basis of what what is a column which has a value uh, let, uh, let's say you have a column uh, like table a and the same data you have okay then i'll write self start from table a where mod mod of column name i mean the one comma two equal to zero that becomes even number not mm -hmm. equal to zero it becomes odd Mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, no that's fine that's fine so okay do you know the union and union all yes. so can you tell me the difference of union and union all and if i perform the operation like union and union on on the table ab then what will be the output so if If you perform the union, it will be one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. If you perform the union all, it will be one, one, two, two, three, three, four, four, uh, five, six. Yes. Mm -hmm. So union all gives us the all the values from table A and table B, and it should be uh, irrespective of duplicates. It will give all the duplicate values also. Union gives us the unique values. But in order to perform union and union all, we should maintain same number of columns. Is the first point. And the data type should be same. Mm -hmm. These two points should be. Okay. All right. I will give you a sentence. Uh, it's a real project example. It is one of the. Just a second. Okay. So just imagine uh, you have a table having a single column. okay you can name it as a name the name of the column is name and uh, under the name you have this line the entire sentence okay so the requirement okay. is now if you could see this first name is there last name is there location age and gender is there okay so can you write a query to divide this detail into the separate columns this all data present in single column and you have to split it across the different column with the respective titles no not sure actually this is some something like you know which any research and do this but based on something i can do the priya i based on hard coding it works for number of characters in it right if it is the first type or the second type based on string function to this is not safe for work, but we need some time to invest on this okay so Uh, have you worked on any substring like we will try to use substring function over here yes yes so do for use here yeah. mm -hmm. okay substring uh, 6 to 14 use for gchi and uh, substring 16 to uh, 18 in use hyderabad and uh, 20 to 20 okay 23 to 20 and 32 Thirty-five years experience. All right, all right. So, are you aware about to rank tens rank row number? Row number, I know, but rank uh, rank tens rank I worked in for way not in SQL. As I said, SQL I most to work with data validation and uh, finding the queries. Nothing on the you know most of these constraints or uh, ranking the things in the data database. I worked on the ranks in the for which. Based on top values and rank and rankings. So, yeah. will you be able to tell the difference of the? <coughs> Sorry. Can you tell me the difference of the rank and the dense rank? Based on your experience. No, uh, dense rank. Dense rank will skip the values. Rank uh, it won't skip the values. Dense rank like the values are waiting. It will skip the values and give you the next value. 
think you are telling some vice versa dens rank uh, will not sorry sorry yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i something skips i lose dens rank won't skip the so the rank what we see in most school colleges it's mostly dens rank okay it's rank so rank so how many project that you had worked on on power bi like, roughly how many like how many dashboards or you have developed till now in power bi close to 30 35 so can you tell me the your worst experience of developing that dashboard like any major challenges you had faced and how did you overcome it working I, with junk tables there, yeah, I, there were close to 80 tables uh, look like your camera is off can you turn off sorry it's not like you know something wrong with my driver let me off on my own so how is it now yeah 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 how is it yes okay what i want to say is like you know i worked with one of the graphics set where i loaded 80 tables and i joined like with multiple jank conditions that was completely into a kind of jank model where there was no fact no dimension everything was the fact is so that was the one of the words that should be checked it leads to data set optimization it leads a lot of refresh issues it leads a lot of problems with the data set mm-hmm. it was one such worst experience i can say okay and which domain you had developed the dashboard so no, in multiple domains have developed this dashboard but for the current like when i said like 80 tables it was for no procurement module all right so have you worked on any cloud technology like snowflake and other platform like azure yes yes snowflake i worked okay and uh, on oracle yes i worked so how was your experience with the snowflake versus the oracle like also no oracle is snowflake is something which is on cloud for so oracle like you need to configure the oracle server for you to have for uh, yeah you have everything placed on the local system whereas you know totally we can connect from the cloud itself it was very fast and there is no issues with that and for for it is in for uh, it data is kept as the kind of copy that is no get data in the power bi server so these are the major the major pieces that on work in the power bi uh, on top of power bi so like not okay and uh, what about the uh, data handling capabilities of snowflake and the oracle like the snowflake being cloud the volume will be more but you know the cost will be very more like you are getting more for us in the snowflake will be more but whereas oracle being on premise database there is no such cost uh, uh, functionality and it will be free of cost once you are using it so mm-hmm. yeah there's a major difference and the volume based on the volume like you know oracle will be better um uh, less less flexible when compared to snowflake because snowflake being sitting on the cloud it has more flexibility and more availability okay all right i think yeah we are good on this point do you have any question for me no no okay i'm good thanks for your time All right, and it was nice to talk with you. I will share feedback with HR. She will get in touch with you. Thanks, Akshay. Thanks. Akshay.